Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Evansville Vandenberg Public Library Board of Trustees for today, November 10th, 2022. Um, first, um, because uh, Sabrina is not able to be with us and is a little under the weather, I'd like to appoint a pro tem treasurer. Mr. Cameron, would you fulfill that responsibility? Yes. Thank you. Next, we have a forum for visitors. Uh, Jamie wanted to speak. And would you give your full name as you come up and speak? Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to give my first name. I don't really give out all the language I do require. So just are streaming live. And I don't know if you all have access to the other end of that video recording. You know, this is an evidence for us. My home is not. So I'm going to start with this. Yeah. Okay. Well, number one, thank you guys for stepping into the board capacity. I know that you are all appointed um, and each of you are doing this on a voluntary basis. And so as a community member, I just want to extend my appreciation for your willingness to give your time to be here on a regular basis that serves our community in such a great capacity. So um, I'm here to talk about the non-solicitation policy in regards to um, allowing uh, candidates to post uh, candidate signs during active voting time when the EVL, EVP, EVPL locations are active satellite uh, vote centers during early voting time. Um, I do have the non-solicitation policy in the very last line in regulations item number five, it indicates that the removal or the um, objection to political campaign signs is in regards to the aesthetics. Um, and I personally, I just feel as though an aesthetic is not a very solid reason to create a barrier between your candidates and your voters whenever we have a transference of power from our county clerk's office as a satellite voting center. Do you have a question? What's, I, do not, I don't know. What is the policy we have? Um, that you cannot place um, political signs on our property. You can campaign on the sidewalk and hold a sign, but you can't put a, a sign in the ground. It's not limited only to campaign signs. It's all signs. Any signs, it's brochures, every, flyers. And that's what it is. We have everyone yeah. putting no, stuff in. He's absolutely right. That's ridiculous. Thank you. <sighs> only during the time that the EVPL locations are utilizing that transference of power as an active voting center, not any other time. You know, a candidate has January 1st is the first time that a candidate can submit their request to be on the ballot. And my position is not to say that we need to overwhelm our libraries from that point year round. I think that that is egregious. But when we do have the active voting time and we have individuals, voters, casting their ballots at these locations in a satellite capacity, they should have the ability to know who is on their ballot. And the only real authentic way of making that a reality is for candidates to be allowed to present themselves. Sure. If we can. So does that include they can't put signs on like the grass area around the building? Yes, it's grounds. And the election boards go along with that? Yes. And that's been cleared by the attorney going through the statute, which even bars people from barring. I mean, you have to allow political yes. signs during political season. So, of course, I'm I'm just walking into this and looking at the the policy right now. But um, it's my understanding this is the policy that's been in place for for years. Um, there are certain limitations. I mean, of course, they can they can hand out posters and flyers. It's just unattended materials, including political campaign signs. So, I mean, I, I can't speak to uh, what Steve did on the research, but I always know that when we go in and, and revise these policies, our firm does the research on that. Elections are the basis of this entire country. Political elections are the basis of this country. The idea of not having political people running for office to handle our business on a public basis, not being able to advertise who they are while they're running is abhorrent to anyone who cares about what this country is about. 
I mean, thank it, you for it does out. create a huge barrier as far as right to representation because the candidates cannot even extend the information that they are on the ballot for the voters who are literally going in to vote for who's on the ballot. So we do have this relational breakdown. In addition, when we look at our board, everybody in here is appointed by an elected capacity, whether it's a school board, whether it's county commissioners, whether it's county council, those are all elected entities in which each one of our members are appointed through. So when we have this circular relationship, as far as, you know, we receive tax subsidies from the community through the voters per the right of representation. It's not tax subsidies. The entire budget for all of this building we have here is public tax dollars, which is part of the entire political process. And I have no idea where this idea came from, but I'm going to interrupt you a little bit and say, can we please have a revisit of that? have a meeting between the attorneys and the election board uh, to see whether we need to revise this completely before we get to the fall elections. And, and again, I can't, I can't speak to, you know, when this was put in place and the intent, but it looks like the intent, I mean, it, it doesn't just speak to political material. So it's all posters, flyers, placards. So I assume part of the intent was to prevent anybody right. who wanted to come state with law, their state law has a special place for political advertising it is especially protected it is the heart of public speak on, on, on public portions yeah on on the sidewalk right uh, there's no state wanna, law that you want to know yeah. something this entire building and all of it is a public asset paid for by public tax dollars and how are you keeping public elections off of the publicly supported mm -hmm. public land and this is this is a nonpartisan issue. All of our candidates that are on the ballot to represent us as voters, a part of this community, need to be able to at least extend the fact that they're on our ballot when we go to cast our our selections. And that's a very basic, but also monumentous, um, you know, right of representation that each one of us um, have the um, privilege to to experience and engage in. Um, and the fact that it's in the non solicitation uh, clause under, you know, aesthetics. In, in my personal opinion, aesthetics does not supersede the constitutional right representation. And with the creativity of our libraries, holding a literature of historical elections, past representatives, you know, we got just copious amounts of really fruitful information that, that surrounds our elective process. Um, we can have a lot of fun with the fall season. I mean, we can put a lot of creativity to establish an engagement with our voting base at voting time while we're an active vote center um, and we have that transference of power. I would also like to point out that EVPL has a massive presence in early voting location numbers and days. So there are only 20 days for early voting to take place in Vanderburg County and EVPL has 11 of those 20 days. There is only one other location that has more, and that's on National Events Plaza, who did allow campaign signs. EVPL is the only location in Vanderbilt County that refused candidates to indicate that they were on the ballot during early voting this season. And they also have the most presence for early voting in the county as well. So not only are we covering 11 of the 20 days, we're also covering five out of the eight locations. So we look at 55% of the time is early voting accessibility of EVPL and 63% of the locations is EVPL, but EVPL is the only one not allowing for representatives to establish themselves even being on the ballot for the voters who are coming in to cast their selections. So we have a real breakdown in that capacity. And I would just like to ask for that non-solicitation policy to be adjusted to allow for that representation during the time of active voting while EVPL has that transference to power from the county clerk's office for the election process. Thank you, Jay. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And I think I think this may be something that the board may want to consider during other business. Okay. But thank you yeah. for your comments. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm sorry, Richard, was that you? Yeah, I was just going to ask, I was going to say, Madam President, can we uh, put this on new business for uh, our next meeting? With our agenda. What other libraries do mm -hmm. and what the, I, the election board is and the input of the county commissioners is and the county council is. Yeah, I think yeah. that. Yes, and I but I would like to discuss have this discussion during other business. Next time. Okay. Uh, sure, sure. Yes. 
even oh, today, during this? Like, that's okay. what we're asking sure. to be provided. Sure. Sure. So um, next, I'd like to share correspondence. We had two delightful, um, uh, one card, well, actually cards, one from eight-year-old Mari and another one from another patron and um, just expressing their appreciation for services that they've received and feelings, uh, positive feelings about their library. So I'll share that. Moving on, I'd like to move on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to consider the consent agenda as a whole, or do we want to look at any individual items? I have a time to go over. Could we go ahead and make a motion to approve the consent agenda A, B, C, and E, and then have a little bit more discussion about D? So we have a motion to approve A, B, C, and E. Do we have a second on that motion? A second. This is Sabrina. Thank you. A motion and a second. Any discussion on those four items? Hearing none, all, of, all in favor of approving those four signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, nay. Motion carries. Now, do we have a motion to consider? <coughs> I have no problem approving. I just want to we can walk through a little bit if we could. Yes. Can we have a motion so we can discuss? So move. Okay, so move. Second. So we have a motion and a second to consider uh, item D. So, um, Scott, could you speak a little bit to item D, which is the McCullough Building Project update? Sure. Um, as we move forward with the McCullough Project, um, I asked our um, lead architect, um, Zach Benedict, to provide us um, with a monthly report that I could forward to the board so you'd have a status update of what's going on with that particular project. And it just, just seemed like the best place. He sent in the PDF. I couldn't cut it inside my director's report um, easily, and it came in late in that afternoon. So I just had Lori place it um, under my director's report as if it was part of my director's report. So when I reviewed it, it, it appeared that um, there already has been a meeting with the location staff as well as with the staff here at central office to begin that discussion of, uh, to further discuss needs. To, to move into the design phase, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I noticed the upcoming activities really looking at space and layout mm -hmm. and the staffing models. Um, so that, mm -hmm. um, um, and I really liked that comment about prioritizing the patron experience. And then I thought that the other comment, the collection size, really thinking ahead to mm -hmm. what that may look like in the future. I thought that was really a positive comment. And then of course, I'm sure Lamont, um, who congratulations, by the way, um, that mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, um, critical needs to consider early on in the project. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on that? And Scott, you indicated you will have a report similar to this monthly. Yes, if there's activity going on, we will try and have a monthly report at the board meeting. Okay. And it says a uh, spring, summer construction start. Anticipated, that's not set in stone. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there if everything goes well, yes. And I assume a year of construction. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's about what it takes for a project of this nature, yeah. Any other discussion on this item? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the uh, McCullough Building Project Update Report signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, next, uh, looking at governance and Heather. So in the memo, you will find an overview of the information we received back from a September request for quotes for tables and chairs. This has been an ongoing need for the locations that were mentioned, mentioned Central McCullough, West, and Stringtown. And we received not quite uh, as many as we had hoped back, but I think we had a, a good enough selection to choose from. Rick is actually sitting in the chair that uh, we have chosen. Uh, I was going to let you all sit in it, but he is sitting in it now. 
Um, but it is a two-tone chair. It does, it will have a fabric, but it's not this fabric. It will be a vinyl fabric uh, that is on the chair. So it's a little bit more easy resistant. Yeah, easy to clean. Uh, and like it says in there, we've got uh, a good quote that included a source well pricing. And we are going to, we'd like to approve the purchase of this from our rainy day fund. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? I do regarding? have a question. Uh, one, I'm grateful to know what it feels like to sit in a $53,000 chair. <laughs> Not one chair. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah. Lamont told yeah. me this was a $53,000 yeah. chair. Don't listen to it. It's a chair. Yes. It has a 17% lean back. We, that's very A lot of lumbar support. support. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I, the serious question is that we, one of the places for this uh, furniture to go is McCullough, and there's a lot of work currently happening and to happen at McCullough. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you about how that was figured into the RFP process. Yeah. So we actually talked about that and mm -hmm. whether or not to include it in this purchase or to keep it as part of the project. Uh, but since our goal with these chairs and with choosing this kind of chair and this neutral coloring that we've chosen was that we could replace them throughout the system at any time. And we had the money within our rainy day fund and actually have budgeted for this purchase. We went ahead to go ahead and put them in through uh, now, A, so they can start using them immediately. Some of their chairs are really old, hard to move, things like that. We also did consult with Zach and Ben uh, on all of our color choices uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that the colors that we're choosing are neutral and could work within any design phase and design that they're looking at in the meeting rooms. Uh, and they felt very good. And actually they chose the table laminate out of, I think we had five that we were trying mm -hmm. to choose from and they chose the one that they felt would work best overall in every location but specifically also in McCullough as they designed around it so we actually look to take delivery of these before the end of the year I can't remember I think it should I think once we get the PO in hand he what was the turnaround do you remember I think it was five weeks yeah so we should be able to have them all right you great likely Thanks. see it on your encumbrance list in December all right <laughs> I'm going to go out and sit in every also, one of them. Yes. Also, yes. Also, we get the good chairs, too. Correct. Yes. You will. Come January, you will have them. Let me just get them later. <laughs> All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving this request for table and chair purchase from the Rainy Day Fund, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. nay. Motion carries. All right, next um, we have Lori with surplus furniture and equipment. So we had a number of surplus items, both IT related and some furniture as we have replaced some of the um, items throughout the system, uh, mainly at Stringtown and um, I'm sorry, Red Bank, not McCullough, Red Bank, um, because they had very dated, worn um, furniture. And so we replaced those this year out of the budget. So the items that we're asking you to surplus are all less than $1,000 per item and have an estimated total value of less than $5,000 qualifying the disposal of the property um, at a public or private sale or transfer of property without advertising in accordance with Indiana Code 5-22-22. So from the list there, you can see most of it was damaged or of no value uh, to the library. And we're asking that you declare this list of surplus transferable to the EVP at all foundation to dispose of as appropriate. Do we have a motion as such? So moved. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Second. Motion and a second to um, uh, allow or to declare these as surplus and allow the foundation to dispose of them as appropriate. Any discussion? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment because when you said uh, Red Bank, it reminded me that I saw in the director's report, I think a couple of pictures of the new furniture that looks so nice out yeah. there. So this uh, was this furniture here was replaced yes. with that furniture. Oh, yes. <laughs> looks very nice. Yeah. All right, we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. nay. Motion passes.
All right, and again, Lori, appropriations. Our appropriations balance for our operating fund at the end of October 2022 is $4,628,848.55, or the equivalent of 31% of our original budget with encumbrances from last year. Uh, I would note that this does not include yet our um, transfer to LERF, which is $275,000. And then we still have several items that we have um, on order. Uh, we've had some supply chain issues this year. And one of our companies that we purchased from, we've already got the furniture, but we're holding off for one piece and they don't bill us until it's all in. So until we get the invoices, um, some of those larger items won't show up. Um, we're hoping to get them all through the December board meeting. If not, they'll be on the encumbrance list so we can utilize this year's budget for next year's payments. Great. Any questions for Lori? All right, next, investments. Our investments in the um, state investment pool of Trust Indiana for all four funds total $13,233,600. And the daily yield, average daily yield for October was 2.8980% or up eight tenths of a percent, almost a whole percent. And the average daily yield for year to date was 0 0.9081 or up uh, 0.1942 or almost two tenths of a percent since September. All right, moving on, approval of bills. Mr. Cameron. Yes, uh, I make a motion to uh, approve uh, bills and payroll. Uh, let's see, dated bills totaling $563,699.45. And then payrolls October 7th. Uh, of $248,058.40 and October 21st of $384,246.68. Do we have a second on that approval? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bill. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, moving on to other business. Appointment of the nominating committee for next year's officers. Uh, Mr. Cameron and Mrs. Huff, would you serve on the nominating committee for officers I will. for next year? I will. Yes. So we have those two members appointed. Those other uh, members who uh, are interested in an office, please uh, get in touch with uh, Mr. Cameron or Mrs. Huff, or you can also contact me and I can let them know. Um, EVPL Light Foundation Liaison Report. And that's Mr. Cameron, back to you. Yes, uh, the foundation board met on October 19th, 2022, uh, with uh, not all members present, but we had a investment and financial update from D John Drone. Uh, total current assets were $872,655.99. That is down, um, I would, I hate to conjecture, but it's somewhat significantly for the third quarter in, in the year overall, as I assume most investment uh, are, uh, except for today. I mean, today, yeah, today was, was the good. best day the Dow's had since April, uh, whatever, yeah. So uh, total current liabilities of 25,000, and those are um, the, lab, the money that comes to the library. Uh, I think it's 2.5% uh, that comes back to the library. No, th those are restricted funds where they were given with a specific distribution and then request. What is the figure though, that we get the 25,000? The 2.5% is 25,000. Yeah. So in, uh, Heather had talked about um, going ahead and securing the author. I won't say the name. 
Cormac McCarthy. No, stop it. One of these no, years, that's real. She, that's not the real person. she is going to bring Cormac McCarthy to Evansville. She has assured me, but it won't be next year. False. <laughs> so uh, we are going to use that money to bring up an author. And I don't even think you told us who it was. Good. I did not put it in the notes. it's not set yet, so we're trying. Okay. Uh, so they would appear in next year, but that those funds are secured now as of that meeting. Uh, we also approved the transfer of $10,000 from the unrestricted fund balance to the Charles Schwab account. And that is a policy to move any funds over $50,000 in the unrestricted fund. The ex officio report was given by Scott Kenny. Uh, he gave us an update on the facility items, including the parking garage and the McCullough project uh, and how it was moving forward. And then in old business, we talked about the 2022 book sales. Uh, sale which is coming up this weekend the 12th and 13th right here in EVPL uh, Central's Browning Room so come on out and uh, join us and then in new business we secured the dates for the 2023 book sales uh, March 4th and 5th August 5th and 6th and November 11th and 12th next year the 2023 foundation meeting schedule was set, uh, set for the third Wednesday of January, April, July, and October. And then we had a brief report on an update on the work that we're doing with J.D. Levy and Associates, uh, which is the uh, board development task force. I think Heather, uh, Ann, Marsha, Barbara and Eric had even met yesterday. Was it yesterday or Tuesday? There as well, yes. yep. yep. And continued that work on our core values and a mission statement. Thank you, Mr. I guess I should say once again that Cormac McCarthy is not coming <laughs> not next, next year. year. As much as we would all love that to happen, Heather, that's not going to happen next year. Thank you for the clarification and thank you for serving in that capacity on an additional board for us. Yep. Appreciate it. All right. Next on the agenda, the master's facility plan and identification of future projects. So just to give a little background, as we've been discussing, um, we have the McCullough project moving forward, but as part of the master's master facility plan, we've identified other high need projects and um, have the opportunity to maintain tax neutrality and bond for those additional projects. However, um, we need to move uh, forward with that um, a, an additional project if it is so the board's desire because the bonding process if we go above a 5.8 million dollar uh, threshold is much more complex and more time consuming so we actually need to get started a little earlier than we did with the McCullough project because the McCullough was under that 5.8 million and some of the estimated costs that we've reviewed potentially would be above that threshold so we can identify um, multiple projects. I know the board has looked at the um, matrix for projects multiple times. I know staff have had input into the matrix. Um, another uh, factor regarding the timeline at, I think, two or three meetings ago, the board actually requested that we get quotes for both the financial service or the legal financial services as well as for the bond legal fees um, that we that we get RFQs for those and giving the um, staff time to do that. So potentially that could be presented to us in December. That's why uh, identifying projects early and knowing kind of what amount we're looking at is critically important. So do we have a motion to consider project or projects, which then we can start discussion? So move. So move. All right. Second. Nope. All right, we have a motion and a second. So any discussion regarding potential projects? Yeah, um, this is premature, isn't it? We don't even know yet whether we're going to be issuing bonds and have money to do any projects. Shouldn't it go to the bond process? Is everyone be doing bonds next year? before we decide whether we can do a project with the money from the bonds? 
So we, we need to know have, what project we have to have a project on record. Long. Yeah, we have to have a project or multiple projects to start that process entirely because you have to state up front what projects you would be using for right. the bond money. You got bond documents, you have to have that. Yes, yes. Yep. which is why I can't remember what month it was when we came and requested the approval from McCullough. And then, be, so we did that. And then we came for the additional appropriations and then we went to the city council and then we could move forward with the bond. bond it's process. the same thing, but we have, it's drawn out more when the project yes. cost is higher. There are multiple, um, multiple, um, meetings with the city meetings. council Thank our, our the fiscal city agent council. multiple yeah. meetings are required with this board and multiple advertisements and i believe is it 45 days 30 30, 30 days so 30 day wait period so that's 60 days right there just on advertisement two mm -hmm. months um just for advertising that we'll have to that is within that 12 month period so what we started today what would be the end of this process so when, when would the bonds be issued so if we start today and you approve projects, then what we would do is go in RFQ, RFP for the, um, the municipal services, advisors. Yes, the mm -hmm. municipal advisors and the bond council. Again, we'd come back in December for approval because all of those have to be on record, including the architect prior to starting the bonding process. And then in January, we would do an additional appropriations. We would start that additional appropriations process again. And then we would start the bonding. It could take up to nine months. Yes, I believe was our uh, estimate from Ice Miller. So we're looking at September, October. Okay. Right. And if it isn't done, and there's a remonstrance, it would go to have to go to 2024 to be on the uh, public. Uh, so ballot. that includes the timeline includes if there was a petition filed and we had to go through the remonstrance yes. process and then it actually aligns us with if it was put on the ballot if it got to that point then it would go on the november ballot you have to have it reached by july to go on the ballot well, that's why you got to start that's it really, really start early because because yes. we've got like that first six months to yeah. get through the first steps and, mm -hmm. and you have that 30-day wait period for petitions and, and so forth and the, so by we would have it by July if we needed to do that. And that would be the longest case scenario. Correct. Heather, I have a quick question. You mentioned about uh, the uh, architect of record. Do, do, can we have conceivably, let's say, we've got a $34 million project. There's a lot of different projects within that $34 million. Would we have the ability to have other architects where there's okay a architect of record, but then an architect for each project? Or once we select that architect of record, they have the whole table of projects. I believe you can do it either way. So, but it would have to be decided before we started the process. So we could do one architect of record for all the projects that would oversee it with a similar contingent as we put on MKM this last time to work with local firms you know, things like that. Or you could break it down project by project as long as we were including it from the start who we would be working with. Other questions or discussion? So this is only like a general concept or we have to identify specific plans we wanna go forward with. We, my understanding is we would need to identify specific locations would be the project itself yes. yeah so if you said for instance that you only wanted to focus on i'm just taking the top three on the decision matrix stringtown west and east that meant that if we had extra money we could spend it nowhere else but those three places because we're deciding which projects we would be potentially bonding for now if you put all the rest on there and said everything else that's on this task matrix could be a possible project with this bond money then we have a little bit more maneuverability that if projects, we can't fund them all, then we can't fund them all. Or if the time frame stretches out and we decide, um, you know, West took more money than we wanted. And so we're not going to do North Park yet. We would have that ability to look at that on a case by case basis. And if we decided that doing Springtown was absolutely ridiculous, we should spend money on it because it's a waste of taxpayer money that could be changed at a later time. Well, once you decide that we could spend the money, then every time we would decide which project was next, 
essentially yeah. theoretically yes we would have that conversation are we going to spend the money on this yes no and then we decide which one we were funding but right now you have to decide what could possibly be covered under that bond because if we leave something out we definitely can't fund it with that bond money so you're saying that it is preferable to rec do them all under one umbrella that was the preference Correct. of the building and That's grounds committee right. yes which yes. makes sense yeah, to give you more wiggle room because it really could be a process of several years. Right, we could right. do, we could choose next year to do the second project and not be looking at doing another project for another three years if we didn't yeah. want too many concurrent projects happening. Because there's three potential projects that could require land acquisition, Correct. and that gives us time to figure out land acquisition yes. and do all the things we have to do with that. Okay. Any further discussion? Sabrina or Richard, just want to make sure you didn't have any further questions. All right. So we had a motion to consider. Do we have a more specific motion regarding which? Um, I guess, do I have to vote on that original motion? The original motion, I think, was just I, since you have a motion on, I, I yes. would go ahead and vote on it. Okay. So we had the motion to consider projects in a second. All those in favor of considering projects, now that we've had the discussion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, no, aye. Nay. Thank I say nay because at this point in time, there's been no information given which will indicate we really need to go out and borrow $30 million and pay back $60 million from taxpayer money for something that would be nice to have, but not essential. So do, and thank you, Bob, for your comment. Do we have a motion to consider specific projects or projects, project or projects? So moved. All eight, and Rick, is that I move for all eight projects that are uh, identified in the facilities master plan, especially in the matrix. So we have a motion to consider all there the projects. There are actually technically nine. No. I want to just note that. Oh, correct. If there, because Isn't we have the units still listed. No, that takes out. There are okay. 10 on the facilities master plan, which includes the annex. At this time, we hadn't talked about that. But if yeah. you really wanted to cover the matrix, it would be nine additional projects that were covered in the facilities master plan. Yes. Uh, so amend the motion to include all nine that are in the master plan. All right. So we have and a motion. second. Okay, we have this a is motion. Sabrina. I second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion for that motion? Any further discussion? That asshole. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor of of considering all nine projects as the project for bonding, uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Nay. Okay, same reason we're giving four. And <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. All right. Announcements. Scott, yeah. All right. Name? Well, you stole a little bit of my thunder earlier, but I wanted to officially <laughs> welcome Lamont as our new <laughs> facilities manager. Um, and he's been in a room for a little bit here, but he's done a really good job of keeping up and really helping and staying on track with uh, the projects that we have going on into year because it's been a very busy into year with a lot of projects we've done capstones at east and now west to make sure that all the pointing and um, is all done we did the exterior brick on both those facilities last year um, but we're doing the capstones now um, the roof's been completed at east and now all the brickwork and capstones are done there as well so we are watertight on the roofs at both of those, our oldest locations, um, as well as the parking deck has been taking a considerable amount of our time as well. And that project's um, um, watertight down the center for the first time since I've been here in three years. And we had that heavy rain the other day. It did not leak where it used to at the turn. So very happy about that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention to you um, quickly, the staff, um, if you look at your statistics this month, have done an outstanding job with programming between um, our digital online programming, our in-person, our outreach program, we've had almost 80,000 residents attend library programs, which is phenomenal. They've done a great job coming up with all sorts of creative 
things. Um, I know last week as a partnership with the Latino Center, uh, we did uh, see if my Spanish is good, Dia de los Motros um, Festival with the um, Latin American Center at the West Branch and had a great turnout, even though the weather was a little bit um, wet early on in the day, but it took a lot of work from their volunteers as well as our staff to make that a success and everyone had a great time. It was very educational, um, but the ofrendas were amazing. Um, if you've never been to that particular event, um, we do it annually. Try and get there next year. It's a great event. Um, and the last thing, I just wanted to give you an update. Um, did speak with uh, Marcy Al yesterday. She did attend her first um, Willard board meeting as the board um, liaison. And um, the brief report being her first meeting that she came back is they are in the process of doing their director search. And they have, um, I guess, consulted with um, Bradbury Miller and Associates to um, do their search for them. And it will be a while before that position is filled. They were thinking um, second quarter or late first quarter at the absolute earliest, but they are doing a full nationwide search for that position. So and that's all I have. I have one other. You should have received an email this week inviting you to our annual holiday breakfast. So I just wanted to bring mm -hmm. it to the front of your mind again. Uh, we hope you can join us. It's always really great to have all our staff together. And we always have wonderful food from Cokies. So <laughs> including biscuits and gravy. Quick question. Mm -hmm. How is that made for with the whatever side group we have for the no, the foundation, we used to request it from the foundation. It's built into the staff development, staff day, staff development, Pay for budget. Tax dollars, yeah. I'm sorry? Pay for tax dollars. Well, we have other dollars in revenue besides just tax dollars. So it is part of the budget that's approved each year. I do have a question for uh, Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, I meant to bring this up during consent. I uh, forgot about it. Uh, definitely congratulations to Lamont doing a fantastic job from what I can see and from my interactions with him on the uh, uh, building and grounds committee. Uh, but I did notice in the personnel report that named him that we didn't name that we were looking for a replacement for him as assistant. Do you anticipate yeah. that? We do anticipate backfilling that position. We just haven't formally opened it yet. And the way they do that report, they report what positions are being currently opened right now. Um, <clears throat> we're getting Lamont acclimated. Then we'll be advertising um, that position shortly. We're trying to, we're also going through our salary survey, yep. correct, right now. Um, they are just finishing up um, with the position description portions. So we're kind of waiting a little bit to see what comes out of that slightly to see if anything changes, if there's any recommendations on that for us, or if we need to put changes in there in working with talking to Lamont now that he's in a new role, what his old role was, um, and have that discussion with HR and see if we need to update that um, position as well yep. on the PD, on the actual position description. And then last comment uh, mm -hmm. from me, I think, uh, I did vote early and I did vote down here at Central. Uh, and all the staff, as always, no matter what I come in for, I have no idea that I'm a board member, I don't think, uh, except the few that I see at these meetings. Always uh, very helpful, uh, always uh, generous and kind. So uh, just kudos. Uh, that's spelled out in the director's report as well. Uh, and just want to add an emphasis to that. Thank you. I could ditto that as as well, and I go to the one um, off of um, on the east side, you know, the library. But always the same, and nobody knows who I am. Uh, but it's it's awesome. And then the other comment I had was uh, Black History Month is in February, mm -hmm. and I, I absolutely would love for the same vigor um, to be. Put, and I know it will. I just wanted mm -hmm. to, to indicate it. So, uh, not sure who the committee is, but you know, if there's anything that I could do, or you know, just let me know. I'm just looking forward to it because the staff has done such a great job uh, throughout the year with these other um, months. Per Marina, se, since you asked that, I just have. <laughs> 
marketing manager asked me if <laughs> you would like to write a blog post about it. Oh. So if you would consider writing a blog post, we would love to have it, but they are already building the programs. And as well, like I said, the blog post and the content right now yeah. uh, in advance of that. So I would be honored. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. I will let Erica know. Oh. She'll get in touch with you. Thank That's you. what I get for speaking up, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> An assignment. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any other business to come before the board? I have one board. quick announcement. I just want to remind everybody that next month, December, our board meeting is the third Thursday, which is the 15th of the month. So make sure that's on your calendar because if you show up on the 9th, I won't be here. Hey, December. But I'll be in Europe. Europe. Oh. Nice, nice drop there. Mm -hmm. It's like saying Cormac yeah. McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not necessary, Lori. <laughs> Not necessary. The rest of you can have a board meeting, but I won't be here. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is the 15th. I just wanted to remind everybody Thanks of that. For the reminder. To check their calendar. All right. Hearing nothing else, this uh, November 10th meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, Travel safe, Richard. Sabrina gets feeling better. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. So where are you going?